what's up guys Chris Dalsa here from the last checkpoint bringing you video 9 of this unity 3d beginner game tutorial series in the last video we showed you how to restart the state of your game and pretty much finished the core mechanics of how the game is going to work but now that we've seen a win condition and a loss condition take place and just reset the board completely we want some way to indicate to the player that hey they've won or they've lost and what their final score is before the game resets completely. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and go back and play with the UI components, just like we did when we added the score UI component. So there are three components that we're going to add today as kind of our final touch on this game. We're going to go ahead into Canvas, expand that out. And remember, we have our score text in there. We're going to go ahead and go to the top and go to Game Object UI. And we'll go ahead and create a new text game object and we'll zoom out so we can kind of see it there you go we'll call this one lose text this is the text that will show up when our player falls off of the game board thus losing the game so we'll go ahead and name it lose text there go ahead and set its position you can kind of see the guiding lines here which really help out on the ui stuff Go ahead and reset the position and go into the rec transform anchor presets. We'll, hit, we'll hold alt and shift and select the center one. Close that out. And because I've already played with the size and the amount of lettering in our loose text, I kind of already know what the width and height is going to look like. Don't think I've come out with magic numbers here. Feel free to play with your width and height your text objects but for mine and if you're following along yours as well go ahead do 350 for the width and 200 for the height and you can see that's already way big for the current size and amount of text for our loose text right here but we're going to quickly fix that we'll go ahead and set the text to say game over and then on the next line we'll say final score colon zero Go ahead and go to font size. We'll go 45 to make it a little bigger. Alignment in the middle and the center. And we'll change the color to white as it looks better against our background there. Great, that looks good. Actually, let's go game over exclamation point. Control S to save. And we'll go ahead and set that active to false for now because we don't want that showing forever. Only on losing states. Go ahead and hover over loose text. We'll do control D to duplicate because the win text is going to look a lot similar. Go ahead and rename this to win text. Enter. Set this to active so we can see it. Instead of game over, let's just say you win! Exclamation point. We'll save that. Everything else should be the same. We'll leave it checked for now so that we know where the button should be in relative distance. So one more UI component. We'll go to game object. UI and we're going to go ahead and add a button. Let's go ahead and rename this button to play again button. So as the name indicates, this is what the player is going to click when they want to play the game again and reset the score and all that. So let's go ahead and set the position to 0, 0, 0, at least to start. Go ahead and we'll move it down actually on the Y position. Move it down to negative 120. Yeah, just below your you win or game over text. And there's a couple of things that you can play around with here. The image component has a couple of cool things like color and material and the actual sprite of the button. So if I double click this, you can see that the button itself is an image. It's a sprite. If we go into the button right next to UI sprite, this is just the stock sprite. It comes with unity for buttons. As you can see, there's not a lot of sprite or button assets that come with Unity. Obviously, when you're starting to create your own projects, you'll probably either want to create your own button sprites or get them from the asset store. But for now, we'll use the stock one since it fits our purposes. We'll leave the color alone. We'll leave everything with this image alone. Collapse that. And the only other thing I want to change, because the color of the button's fine, is the press color. And this is the color that shows up when you actually press the button or hold down to click the button. Just to indicate to the user that they've clicked the button, let's make it a little bit more obvious. So let's go ahead and go into press color, 
Let's give it a nice bright green color. So let's go ahead and set that to inactive. We don't see it. One more thing that we want to change. As you can see, the play again button is collapsed. So let's go ahead and uncollapse it. And you can see this is where the text lies for what shows up on the button. Right now it's just plain old button. Let's go ahead and change the text for this and have the text say play again to indicate the player that if they click this, they're going to play again. Let's go ahead and change the text to play again button text. Be as verbose as possible here. We'll control S to save. Let's go ahead and go on the win text, set that inactive and play get button set that to inactive. Great, so that we have a clean board state again. And now we'll go ahead and go into our player controller so that we can actually set these to activate at the correct times. So let's go ahead and double click player controller. Oops, double click player controller and go into it. So now there's a couple new things that we want to add. Just like before when we added the score text, we want to add our brand new UI components. Let's add first our loose text. Let's go public text, lose text, public text, win text. And we'll go public. This time instead of text, it's a button. Button, play again, button. And you can see after we do that, that it's already recognized because button actually falls under this unity engine.ui namespace. So let's go ahead and activate our lose text, our win text, and our play button, and our play again button on the right trigger events. So remember before, when we hit an object with the tag win, we reset the game state, and when we hit the object with the game over tag, we do the same thing. Well now we want to display two different prompts to the user when either of these is hit. The first one, the win condition, we want to first reset the game state, just like before. But now we also want to set the win text. We'll say win text dot text equals, and we'll say you win. And then to establish a carriage return, we say forward slash n, so that'll hit the return key there. Final score colon close paren. And we'll add the final score, which is count. But just keep in the back of your mind that remember in reset game state, we set the count back to zero. So for now, this final score will always say zero. We're going to go ahead and fix that in just a sec. Uh, but just to let you guys know that and to have you guys thinking about how we're going to change that in just, in just a moment here. Now with the text established, let's go ahead and reactivate the win text prompt. So we'll say win text dot game object dot set active. We'll set that to true so that it shows the user. And we'll also make the play again button. Play again button dot game object dot set active back to true so that also shows up to the player. Now on top of setting these new texts to active, let's go ahead and hide the count in the top right since we want the player's eyes to kind of focus on the new win text. We'll go ahead and say score text dot game object dot set active. And we'll say this is false. So we'll turn it off. Now we want to do almost the same thing for game over, but we'll go ahead and change a few things, right? After the reset game state in the game over state, we're going to go ahead and say lose text dot text equals game over for slash n final score colon count set the lose text game object active to fault to true play again button set that active to true And the score text, once again, we're going to set that to false, set the active flag to false. We need to first establish what the play again button is going to do. 
And then we need to add we need to add what's called a listener onto the play again button so that when the player clicks the button, it'll perform a certain task that we've established. And I think the task that we want the button to establish, since the game board will already be reset by the time we win or lose, that shall already be handled. I think the play again button is really just going to set uh, reset our score and reset the UI objects back to their original state. For instance, if we won, we want that win text to no longer show when we hit that play again button. So let's go ahead and start on that. We'll go after reset game state. We'll call this method void play again button action. And the actions we want to take, actually, we'll go ahead and steal this since we don't want the count to be updated on a reset of game state. We want it to be updated when the player hits the play again button. We'll steal these and put them down here. Close up the empty space there. So we went ahead and reset the count. And the second thing we want to do in a play again button action is reset the UI. And that consists of hiding the win or lose text, hiding the play button, and showing the score text once again. Let's go ahead and start there. We'll say score text that game object that set active is now true. We'll say win text that game object that set active to false. Lose text that game object that set active to false. And one more play again, again button game object that set active to false. So we're going to go ahead and set the score text back to true so that we see that in the top right corner. Uh, regardless of if we won or we lost, we'll go ahead and set the active flag to false on both of these texts. And same thing with the play again button, so the player won't see that until they win or lose again. Great, so now that we have the action for the button, we need to add a listener to the button to actually call this when the button is clicked. So let's go ahead and scroll to the top here, and we need to make sure that the button is always listening from the very start. So we'll go ahead and put it in the start method. Right after start position, let's go ahead and get the play again button. And we're going to go dot, and since it's a button, we're going to say on click. So we're, list we're waiting for a click. You can see in the summary it says Unity event that is triggered when the button is pressed. This is the user clicking the button. And on the click, we're going to add listener, and you can already see it's already defaulted there. It says add a non persistent listener to the Unity event. So we're going to add a listener. And so it's listening for that click, and once it gets that click, we're going to go ahead and call the play again button action and save it there. And there's one more thing that we want to do. So when we get to a win state or a lose state, the text on the screen will show up accordingly. Either you win or game over, and then it'll show your final score, and then it'll show the button play again. One thing we didn't account for was that the player can still use the directional buttons or the WASD keys to move the player object while that text is still on the screen. So I think while that text is still on the screen, while we're still in that uh, win or lose state, we should lock the player from moving. And we can do that by creating a variable that just makes sure that the player is in a state of mobility. So let's go ahead and add a private variable here. Private boolean and boolean is just true or false and we'll say game started so game started can either be private boolean bool game started and bool is just a boolean meaning true or false so either the game has started equals true or game hasn't started so equal to false. So in our start method, let's go ahead and 
upfront establish game started to true. Boom. And when we get into either a win or a lose condition, let's go ahead and say game started equal to false. Lose condition as well. Game started equal to false. And then when the player hits play again, at the very end of all this, let's go ahead and say game started is true because the player has chosen to play again. Now we'll go ahead and use this variable in our fixed update. And we'll go ahead and only perform fix update when game started is true. So let's go, let's do an if clause, if game started. And so if it's true, we can go ahead and execute this. Otherwise, if we haven't started yet, never do this. So we'll go ahead and do control S there. So this should prevent the player from moving the ball object on screen when we're in that game over state or that you win state. So we'll go ahead and click control S to save. Minimize this, and you can see we have some empty public variables over here. Go ahead and drag them over accordingly. Lose text to lose text. Win text to win text. And play again button to play again button. Control S to save. And let's go ahead and hit play. And let's first make sure our win condition works. Pick up gems along the way to make sure our final score works. I think I've done this enough times. Almost there. So we've picked up, we'll have picked up 16. And so our final score should be 16. It should say you win. Great, you win, final score 16. I'm pressing WASD and I'm not moving. Pressing the arrow keys and I'm not moving. Go ahead and press the play again button. Now when I click it, it should be green. Perfect, our score shows back up. And now we can move again. Let's pick up a couple here and go with Try to go for a game over. Three. Game over. Final score is three. Trying to click the directional buttons are not working. Perfect. Play again. Score resets to zero. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and press play to stop it. And guys, that is um, our game. I think we only have. We'll do one more video after this. Um, and that video will just involve exporting your game. But for the most part, your game is in a done state. If you want to show it off, you can already show it off within the Unity editor. Um, see if your friends can beat your high score. If they can get to the end state, hopefully you didn't make it too difficult. Um, and ask them what they think of the game. Because now it's one whole complete game. Although it's a small level, it is a complete game. And you guys should be proud of yourselves for doing it. So like I said, I think I'm going to do at least one more video on this, on exporting your game so that you can share it with your friends, with your family, um, and show off what you did. Because I know you know how hard you worked on it, and uh, it's no small feat to make your first game. So stay tuned for that next video. And guys, as always, if you like the content, please hit that subscribe button, follow the channel, hit that thumbs up button underneath the video, uh, and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.